today we're going to be talking about capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is when a business wants to go out and purchase typically a fixed asset. So something that's very costly. So this process is very important for us because if we make a mistake and we purchase some equipment, machinery, a building, whatever it might be, if we purchase this thing and we shouldn't have and it was a mistake and it's not good for us profitability wise, we're going to be in a lot of trouble because this was very costly and it could make our business go bankrupt. So capital budgeting is a way that we can quantify these decisions that we're going to be making, whether we should purchase this equipment or not purchase this equipment, whether we should purchase a building or we should not purchase the building, whether we should start manufacturing this new product or not manufacturing this new product. So capital budgeting is going to help us to decide that. Now, there are actually four methods that we're going to be discussing. The first two are the non-discounting methods, non-discounting methods, and they're the payback period and the unadjusted rate of return. So let me erase this. This is capital budgeting, but now we're going to look at non-discounting methods. Non-discounting methods just means we're not going to use time value of money, which makes them easier. Because whenever you calculate time value of money, which you guys remember from accounting two, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, accounting 230, um, it's a little bit more tricky because a lot of times we're not quite sure, is it a present value, is it a future value, is it an annuity? Well, in these two methods, we don't use uh, time value of money. But in the next video, we are going to use time value of money because we're going to look at some discounting methods. Okay, so the first one is the payback period. This is usually a method that most companies use right off the bat because they want to know how long is it going to take us to get this money back from this investment. So let's say the investment is a piece of equipment. Um, our business needs this piece of equipment in order to operate. The piece that we have right now uh, hasn't been working very well, it's kind of old, so we need to invest in a new piece of equipment. But there are several manufacturers out there that make something similar to what we need, and we're not quite sure which one we want. Well, you might want to decide well, what's going to be the payback period for this piece of equipment. And the company may set, we want it to be paid back in three years or four years or five years. They might have a threshold that they have set already. So let's say that this piece of equipment that we're looking at is going to cost us 50000 So I like to write down negative 50000 because that's the cash flow that's going out. When we're looking at the payback period, we're always looking at cash flows. So this is the cash flow going out, and it's immediate. It's at year zero. Okay, when are our other cash flows coming back? Well, this information has to be given to us. We have to be able to calculate it, or if it's in a problem, it has to be given to us. So let's say the first year, they anticipate cash flows coming back to 20000 Well, have we paid back the 50000 yet? No, nope, we're still $30,000 away. Okay, so let's say in year two, let's say it's also 20000 Have we paid back? No, we've only got 40000 and it's costing us fifty. dollars so let's say in the third year, another 20000 We have now paid back the original 50000 And it took place in two and a half years. Okay, so that would have taken place in two and a half years. So if we want a payback period of at least four years, this would qualify. Okay, we want to take this one into consideration because it's less than the four years. Now the next one I'm going to use is, let's say it was 60000 Let's say our payback was 60000 and let's say in the first year, the first year it was 30000 in the second year, 20000 in the third year, 10000 and in the fourth year, 10000 So on this example, when is the payback period? Well, hopefully you can look at this and you can say, well, I can see the payback period is going to be exactly three years. Because when you add this up, 30 plus 20 is 50, plus 10 is 60. So we'll get our investment back of 60,000, we'll get it back in three years. Now obviously this isn't accurate because this does not take into consideration the time value of money. But remember, this is just a really quick way for businesses to calculate what the payback period is to help them for capital budgeting decisions. Most businesses would not use just the payback period. They would use this one in conjunction with some other methods to try and help them determine whether this is a piece of equipment or machinery that they want to invest in. Now, let me just point out a couple things, some drawbacks of the payback period. 
The first drawback of the payback period is that it ignores time value of money. So we've talked about that. That's the first drawback. It ignores the time value of money. The second drawback is that it ignores profitability beyond the payback period. What I mean here is, look, we're going to generate $10,000 more. They're not even taking that into consideration in the payback period. The payback period just says, we're going to get our money back in three years. Now, obviously, if you're a manager, you're going to look at what the cash flows are going to be after the fact, okay? At least hopefully you would. But the payback period itself does not take into consideration profitability beyond the payback period. Okay, so that's the payback period. That's one of our non-discounting methods. Another one is the unadjusted rate of return. Now, these are the ones that are in the textbook. There are more non-discounting methods, but these are, these are the two that we're going to concentrate on in this class. The unadjusted rate of return is the increase in future average net income. Now, this is in your textbook, so you might want to take a look at the form. Now, I'm not going to write it up on the board, but it's the increase in future average net income divided by our investment. So once again, we're looking at the investment cost, and we're looking at the future average increase in net income. Now, this one looked at cash flows. The payback period looked at cash flows. This is more of an accounting type uh, non-discounting method. So we're not looking at cash flows, we're looking at net income. So let's assume that our average net income is 10,000. Now, obviously, average means you took the net income for several years, added them together, so you took net income for the last five years. You add them all up, and then you divide it by five to get the average. That's pretty simple. Now we're gonna divide this by our investment. So our initial investment, let's say it is $100,000. So all we have to do is divide this, and we get 10%. So in this example here, our unadjusted rate of return would be 10%. It's just a down and dirty easy way to try and calculate what's the percentage return that we're going to get on this investment. And we're going to get about a 10% return. Now, obviously, this isn't 100% accurate. In fact, oftentimes, it's not accurate at all. You've got to be very careful with this method. We're going to look at two discounting methods in the next video. One of them is the internal rate of return. That method is much better at calculating what the actual rate of return is because we're looking at time value of money calculations. So let me just repeat a couple things. We're looking at capital budgeting methods here in this chapter because these things cost lots of money. This buildings, machinery, whatever it might be. And companies don't wanna just go buy a new piece of machinery and not do some research first. They're first gonna do some research on the equipment, see how reliable it is, what's the warranty, all that kind of stuff. But we also wanna quantify whether we think it will be a good deal for our business. And these are two of the non-discounting methods, the payback period and the unadjusted rate of return. This one uses cash flows. This one uses net income. The formulas are in your textbook. Uh, the formula in your textbook for this method, if you look at it, you can see that it's not 100% accurate because it tells you to take the, the net income, I'm, I'm sorry, the cash flow per year. But if the cash flow per year changes, then that formula does not work. But you can just visually see what the payback period is gonna be. So good luck with your non-discounting methods. And when you have some time, once you understand this well, then go to the next video, which will be the discounting methods. Good luck.